good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, May 6th, Berlin Select Board regularly scheduled meeting to order. Um, with us tonight, to my left is Flo Smith and Joe Staub. To my right is Tor Nelson and Carolyn Weasel. I'm Brad Town. And any additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, no. Uh, public comment. Okay. Hearing not, oh, yes. Okay. I'd like to speak. Sure. My name is Nick Garbacher, president uh, in town and also a volunteer on the local fire department. And I was here at the last select board meeting late. Um, we tried to attend via <coughs> Zoom. The Zoom link was not working. Not the important issue. I just want to say, though, that when I was at the last select board meeting, I was very disappointed to learn after the select board meeting of the unofficial coin drop that had taken place down at our Riverton station. And I want to bring it to the select board's attention that apparently there is a failure to communicate within our department uh, with Chief Joe Staub and our deputy chief that our board of directors was never notified of that incident. And I know it's not a town incident because the department is separate of the town. But at the same time, I feel it was quite an embarrassing situation and just want to bring it to this select board's attention that the fact that we have a board of directors for our fire department and the failure to notify our board of directors would be like a failure of you, select board stop, not notifying the select board of some wrongdoing going on right here within the town. And I really find that disheartening and disgraceful. That's what it. Thank, Thank you. I'll raise a point of order here. Actually, that's on the agenda, so it's not germane to the public comment section. Uh, any other public comment? Um, yes, if I may. Sure. Call you. Um, I'm just hoping that when we do get to the ice rink solar discussion, that someone will be able to uh, state whether they looked into and can address any of the questions that I had brought up earlier. That's all for now. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments? Well, hearing none. Uh, Payne Turnpike North update. Okay. Uh, we're all familiar with this uh, spreadsheet or, or flow chart. Uh, I don't know if anybody in the audience wants any copies of this. But around this is the chart from VTrans. Um, for the steps we need to take through. Uh, as you can see, it's a very long list. We are just starting step number four on this list, which is uh, the design uh, certifying uh, consultant. Um, we just uh, signed the contract with the uh, municipal project manager last week, and uh, that's been approved by VTrans, uh, so we can move ahead. Uh, we've got the engineer who we can now use to find another engineer is basically what the steps are. <clears throat> so we'll be moving forward with that as fast as we can to get the actual design engineer on board. And uh, that's when things really start moving faster. That's good news. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> we will skip the next one for right now and go to status of town related legislation. Okay, these next two are actually combined, and I'm going to run them together, and I'm going to kind of do them out of order. Um, H885 is our charter change on the local options tax. Uh, that has passed the House last week, and it's currently in the <coughs> Senate, uh, and they will be taking testimony in uh, Senate government operations tomorrow, and I'll be testifying on behalf. I don't expect any issues uh, with that, and uh, they, they've, uh, the Senate co-ops is uh, quite busy agenda tomorrow, so I think they'll move pretty quick on that. Uh, the second bill, which is kind of then evolves into the uh, 23 acres of Payne Turnpike North property purchase proposal, uh, I'm going to start with uh, Bill H868, which is the transportation funding bill, often referred to as the T-bill. Um, and in the original section, 
uh, 30 of the, of the Senate passage uh, provides um, $2 million in central garage fund reserve funds for the purpose of purchasing real property of approximately 23.5 acres on the Payne Turnpike in Berlin adjacent to the state-owned property on which to site a new central garage. Um, Andrea Chandler behind, uh, behind you, Mr. Chair, uh, brought this to our attention and um, so very quick 48 hours, a very busy 48 hours. It was actually scheduled for third reading in the uh, Senate uh, when it came to our attention. We were able to work with um, Senator Perchek, who is the um, acting chair of the Senate Transportation Committee. Uh, he was able to reopen uh, hearings on that. And Senator Watson uh, proposed an amendment uh, which was adopted and it's in your uh, in your packet. Uh, now basically saying use up to two million dollars in central garage fund reserve funds for the purchase of purpose of purchasing real property onto which to site a new central garage. And then further, the secretary collaborate with the municipality in which the new central garage is to be located regarding the design and construction of the facility. Um, so that passed um, the Senate. Uh, so now the House and Senate versions um, differ. Uh, so they have a conference committee, three senators and three representatives um, that will work out the differences and, and come up with the final bill. Um, so I guess, Andrew, I'll turn it over to you uh, with the thoughts that you have on this. Right. Uh, it, it went all very quickly and so smoothly for decoupling. I think, you know, it'd be great. I know there are other maybe sites in Berlin for the state garage to be here in Berlin. But the more I looked into the re research on our town website all about what's going on, you, all the groundwork we've already laid, for the town center area with, we've already got a designation of uh, what's it called the neighborhood development area. Yeah, the neighborhood de development area, which is um, contiguous with the town center and uh, everything that's in the, already in the pl uh, town plan, all bolsters and facilitates housing and to waste that last open area um, and not put housing there just seemed um, like it wouldn't be ideal to say the least, but that it would be great to see if the town could actually facilitate that. Can we cut in here on that field? I've been on that field for 50 years. It's a wetland. And I believe it has been applied over time to have housing there. Natural resources will not pass it. Of the 23 acres, there's only the peak on the top that's actually dry. Everything else goes in wet. If you go over the old mill yard right now, it's in standing water. The water bar through it's in standing water. Underneath that ground, you will find the old tile where Raymond, uh, Raymond Turner in the 1950s had to put dredge tile to clean out that field. It's wet. It's very wet and stuff. And to put in a lot of housing is not going to work. You're looking at a couple of houses, maybe, and that's it and everything. Yeah, it just that could be. isn't well, we'd be a okay field well, to well, set up for something like that. Ideally, it would be multifamily housing, like what's going in on at the I'm Simpsons. just saying you're, it's, it's so limited because it is so wet and everything for what is actually workable property there and stuff because of how wet it is. When you drive by, it looks great. You go out and walk in it, I see more vehicles, more tractors, more trucks, more everything sunk in it because it just sinks out of sight. It's only the actual peak. It dips to wet and an actual peak again. And that's the only two spots you really can build. The rest of it is sopping wet. And I don't think that if you put housing in there and stuff like that, you're going to be able to put in much because of the area and stuff. And I know it has been, Agency of Natural Resources has been approached about that and several other businesses and been declined because of the wetlands. So that has to be considered and stuff like that and everything, you know. Whereas the town garage being in a centrally tight area and stuff like that and everything would, would cover 
that buildable area and stuff like that and everything. The rest of it's just well, it's yeah, simple. And I'm curious about why the state thought that it would be a good site for the state garage right. with a $2 million price tag and a small It's portion. my understanding they want to put the state garage in, add the airport garage into it, and then the other buildings up too for a small complex on that same area and stuff like that. But for $2 million it seems... We do have two representatives from Feed Trends with us, Secretary Flynn and uh, Mr. Law. If you want to jump in at any time, go right ahead. Sure. Well, first of all, Joe Flynn, I'm, I'm the Secretary. Thank you very much. And thank you for allowing us to come tonight and putting us on the agenda. I first wanted, if I could rewind this a bit, as I testified in the committee that Mr. Nelson and I were in that day, that the agency fully expected that it would reach out to the town, but everybody needs to understand there's a bit of a, a, a process dance and we didn't think it was appropriate to reach out to the town about what you thought about us buying property without having permission from the legislature to spend the money that we have to do that because then they might find that the wrong order. So if there was any um, you know, signals that didn't seem right on our part toward the select board. We didn't mean that deliberately. We certainly didn't think that we could buy property, build property, and never have a conversation. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, we've, we've looked at the property and we agree with the conversation based on some information that we've received from DEC um, and the, the landowner, I believe, has worked with an engineering firm that clearly all 23 acres are not buildable and Ms. Chandler and I had an email exchange on a Sunday a few weeks back, and I appreciated her, her views. Um, but to the point I think that was just made, we'd be, on the lower piece at least, we'd be looking at uh, obviously consolidating on what we believe is the buildable piece, and we still have some more due diligence to do before we enter into a purchase and sale agreement. At this point, we have a letter of interest, um, which the next phase would be a purchase and sale agreement. But I, I want to say, you know, for the record that um, we clearly understand housing is a crisis in Vermont. Everybody says it. Housing is important. I mean, if the town or if the town has a developer ready or able to move into that site or wants to take over that site, wants to buy that site, I mean, we, we will bow out and join you in embracing more housing. We saw it as a site that's been vacant for, I believe, 10 or 11 years. I looked at the site previously when I was the Deputy Commissioner of Public Safety because uh, back then we had this idea about replacing the Middlesex Barracks. <laughs> and we also looked at the library building, but we're uh, at that point in time, and it didn't seem to work. So anyway, it's, uh, it's a site that's been, if you will, I think, on the state's radar for some time. And, uh, you know, we do believe that with now, and now it's a bigger discussion, of course, with the water and sewer that goes up the Payne Turnpike. The landowner has put that road spur in. There's water and sewer in the road. There's power in the road. So there's a lot of um, preliminary work that is done, if you will. So I think that that adds, from a purchaser's perspective, um, some value in what we would consider, you know, the cost of purchasing that. We would be looking at the entire, the entirety of the three parcels, but the plan would be, and, and Todd has some preliminary, this, everything is preliminary here, but again, we just wanted to come and have this conversation. We would be looking at um, only building uh, a shop garage down on the lower portion to get to get us back into business, to get us out of the floodplain down on Route 302, to get our equipment and our people in a facility, uh, frankly, that they need to move forward. Whatever else might occur on the property um, is, is down the road because we have you know, fiscal realities like everybody else. So, um, so I, I just, I think, I think the most important thing for us, you know, tonight is to have this discussion and, and ask, you know, is the select board open to engaging in a dialogue with AOT under which, under certain circumstances, would you welcome this? Or is it, is it the consensus of the select board you, you don't want this, prop, this project on that property? I mean, Mr. Nelson mentioned negotiating or attempts to negotiate with another state agency about some sidewalk, and, and those would be things we would expect to engage in, but we hadn't come to you first. So um, I'm here to say that, 
you know, we're open to conversations about if you would consider embracing this project, what might be some parameters around that, um, or is it completely out of reason to consider embracing the project? Can I ask a question? Sure. My understanding is there was some other property offered over on a different row. Coos, what is it? Coos? Coos. Is yeah. there a reason why that's not acceptable? It's unacceptable. We would not do that because there's no power, there's no water, there's no sewer. It's a class four road. It's a steep road. I've been down that road three times. In July or early August, there was water over the bottom of the road. It would cost us more money, I think, to bring the utilities down there than it would be to buy the property that has the utilities already on it. So as far as the agency goes, we would rule that out completely. Um, well, I'm just going to speak as the, for, as the former chair of the Planning Commission. Um, we worked really hard to get the town center designation, and we worked really hard to get the neighborhood designation. Um, and the, you know, the, the ACCD was very encouraging because they, you know, they think housing is a priority. The, the, the water and sewer is there for, for that purpose, um, and I think the, the return to us is not as great with, with this building. And it just seems to me as though. <coughs> It's a, it's a classic, and I work for the state, but it's a classic example of one arm not paying attention to what the other arm's doing, because it was clearly, um, and I know we don't own the land, and I know that, you know, as, as non-owners of the land, we can't dictate what happens to it, but I'm personally very disappointed at the thought of the, the building going there, after all the work we put in to get those designations. If I might, one thing that threw us off was on your website, <laughs> you list, I believe, 27 or 30 criteria that are acceptable for that property. And you list transit center, you list government, you list hotel, motel, you list, I believe, sales lot. I don't know what that... Well, that's because there's three there. <laughs> no, well, I, I didn't know what a sales lot was, yeah. whether that was a car dealership. And housing and congregate living were the first two, but there are like 25 other things that, according to your website, indicated were acceptable. So again, we're not trying to run roughshod over anybody, but we looked at that and we said, by the town's own definition, these are acceptable uses for this property. So we entered into a letter of interest so that at least we could secure our options, go to the legislature to see if they would provide us the authority to spend the money that we have. And then once that's, and it's not technical yet, I guess, until the governor signs a T-bill, but, and then after that, you know, Number one, we have a certain window of time that we have to fish or cut bait, if you will, with respect to a purchase and sale agreement, but also have dialogues like this to, to understand, you know, doing our due diligence. Are there, again, it, it, you know, are there other options? Are there other initiatives or other entities we're unaware of that are coming forward? Uh, you know, just have this general discussion, which is why we're here. And I appreciate your views on that. Yeah, I mean, Technically, a government facility is allowed as a permitted use under our zoning regulations. Um, but if you look above that under purpose, uh, you know, promoting site designs that feature reduced parking footprints. I mean, the central garage, you look at that, that's 100% asphalt. Mm -hmm. uh, landscaping, there's very little asphalt, uh, very little pan uh, Landscaping, mainly in front of the uh, training center building, is you know a few trees, but the rest of the that lot is pure asphalt, totally devoid of, of any landscaping and green infrastructure. So, I mean, to me, among the other issues that were brought up, um, you know, that right there is not what we envisioned for that um, area of the town, and, and including it in the town center um, zoning district. Uh, another issue with that is paying turnpike north is weight restricted. Um, so I don't know how you envision bringing the 50,000 pound uh, dump trucks and snow plows. Uh, and, you know, even, even at Sunscratch now, there's a full, you know, 10 or 12,000 gallon tanker sitting mm -hmm. there, probably looking to be uh, auctioned off, what, this weekend, next weekend, this weekend. whenever, mm -hmm. you know. So that's, you know, that's. Gross could go weight eighty to hundred thousand right there. It's a little bit more than our twenty four thousand weight pound weight limit. So I don't know how you propose to deal with that. I can speak to that one. Um, there's only <laughs> weight permits that the town issues or the state issues for over twenty four thousand. So your trucks can run on it and fire fuel trucks. trucks and fire trucks and everything else. So the twenty four thousand is only for regular vehicles until you get the overweight permit. Um, 
So you're so you're proposing to uh, run the shit out of our roads for for a ten dollar fleet permit? I, I'm saying you know, that we would certainly never put it that way. No, I'm, I'm saying that that happens now. <laughs> there are multiple vehicles over twenty four thousand that run that. Yeah, road. but it's but it's one or two from each fleet each day. It's not the full central garage where you know there's there's what, what's parked now in central garage right now twenty dump trucks and how many go in and out every day. You know, I mean, it's not just the ones or twos, you know, from each company that goes down with what you're proposing to put in here. Now, I'm willing to work with you on this, <laughs> just like we worked with the uh, state hospital, um, you know, with additional pilots and things like that. But a $10 fleet permit ain't going to cut it. And that's kind of what we faced. Carl and I were both in the DRB when the state police came in and the attitude of the state, and you might say it's Department of Public Safety versus Department of Transportation, you're all the state. You're all the state of Vermont. You're all executive branch um, offices under the governor. They came in and says, you know, basically they said, forget your zoning regs, we're going to do what, you, what we want. We said, you know, zoning requires the sidewalk. They say, we're not putting one in. So here the state of Vermont, as much as they're promoting pedestrian safety and sidewalks and walkability, and, and Mr. Flynn, I know you're very much familiar with this, state of Vermont is saying, forget it, we're not doing this. And that's, that's my concern, that's kind of the, almost the arrogance I've been feeling about this process so far, that, you know, we're going to do what we want, we're the state, and, you know, we'll get our $10 fleet permit, and, you know, there goes your roads. If I might. Sure. Uh, if you go back to the YouTube testimony that you and I both were in, Mr. Nelson, first of all, we had no idea about wanting green space. We had no idea about anything because we hadn't had the opportunity to have a conversation with you yet. That's what we were hoping to start tonight. But I believe, in fact, I know that I said, if you want to talk about a sidewalk, we're open to that. I mean, you know, I don't necessarily look at us as arrogant. We're here to ask if there are any conditions under which the Berlin Select Board would embrace this project given certain parameters that were, you know, favorable to you, including if you said we might, but we'd like you to consider sidewalk and curbing. I haven't denied that. So I, you know, I, I, I can't speak to your experience with, you know, other agencies, but um, we were just hoping that we could go forward with this thought and this project in a new light. And, and just again, I'm asking if that's a possibility or, or, or not. I don't know if we can answer that tonight, but can I, so the front of the property, so I, I, I didn't realize that everything was going to be in the back. So what would the proposed use of the front be down the road? It could be an office building down the road, you know, a rectangular office building up where the houses were. But we're, we're talking about what we think we can afford to build now. No, I understand. We, I just, right. seeing that, the, the prime land free, I was just curious what Correct. that No, that might would be not there. be the garage. We would anticipate, well, we would, we are planning to put everything that's garage related down in the back where you see this on this tentative drawing. When I say tentative, I'm not suggesting we're going to change your mind and put it up on the upper part. No, parcels. no, I understand. I'm referring to the drawing itself being tentative, the exact number of bays being tentative. That's what I mean. I have a question about the wetland part. Sure. So it sounds like only the middle part mm -hmm. can be built on because everything else is wet. Mm -hmm. So would you leave the rest open? Sure. We would have to work with you know DEC. Um, the landowner, I believe, has worked with an engineering firm. Um, well, it's not exact, but I believe we're, we are of the opinion there's probably eight or nine buildable acres altogether. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe, the, maybe there's a little more when you consider the upper portions. But yes, we would. I mean, I, we would have no other use for a wetland. I mean, we wouldn't be. We have to comply with everything everybody else does, other than maybe zoning permits, to your point, which the Vermont legislature set in force, not us. They did that. Um, so. I mean, we would, you know, we would want to keep as much of that area that's natural looking that way, and we would not be opposed to shrubbery. I mean, the point about Route 302, uh, the building was built in 1955. The agency was able to use property that was there. We don't have any room down there to landscape yeah. or put green space in, but I will tell you that under this administration, we're building a new district garage in Swanton off exit 20 up in the handy Toyota Chevrolet area, and that's a green building. 
So we are coming at things responsibly. I believe the term is net zero. Don't hold me to that if I'm mistaken. Uh, but it's going to be a green facility. It's going to have a lot of, a lot of um, sun, solar, EV. Uh, so, uh, you know, our business is a garage business, very much like all the car dealerships in town and anywhere else. <clears throat> but uh, especially with a new construction, we're able to take considerations and concerns into account within reason. But we are responsible. We're proud of what we build because this is something that's going to be around for 75 or 100 years. And we hope that you might be receptive to embracing this under circumstances that would be appealing to you. I worry that the town doesn't own it. So I worry something worse could go in <laughs> if we decide not to. We have to start fundraising, Andrea. Who <laughs> <laughs> of us? Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Is it okay to follow up on the wildland issue? Has the uh, has the agency had a wetland delineation done on the property? Yes. The, well, the, 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 the owner and the EC have done so. Yes. Is that uh, public? Uh, can it's actually on that map that I just handed out delineated on there in green. The wetland delineation is on here. Yeah. Um, it's. I, I did not find it on the state wetland site, um, but it has been approved by the wetlands coordinator. Shannon Morrison, the delineation that was done by uh, by Grenier Consulting. Okay, uh, has, is there a has a permit been issued for the road and the utilities to enter onto the site? Y yes, that was a Corps of Engineer permit that was issued to Superior Development, the owner of the parcel. Uh, is there a state the wetlands permit issued for that? Uh, I mean, the Corps of Engineers and wetlands would work together on that, but the Corps has has the permit. That, Don't that, that, no count on that. <laughs> uh, they, they've been working with Shannon and they put it in yeah. with her knowledge and... Well the point I wanted so to make is that it, is there eight or nine non wetland air acres on the, the entire parcel? That's what we believe to be the case. Probably a lot of housing that can be done at eight or nine acres. The other issue I would say is I assume that the access onto the property went through the designated wetland. It has a permit from the state. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can increase that acreage uh, under the Vermont Welling rules by getting a permit as long as you haven't significantly had an undue adverse effect on the functions and values of the wetland. So, so perhaps even more houses that can fit on an eight or nine acre parcel mm -hmm. could be put if if uh, if a permit was obtained. Anything else on this? Can I just throw something out there? One of the things that we're trying to do over there is create a multi-use path. Mm -hmm. And we do have funding for it uh, on the mall side. Mm -hmm. um, one of the roadblocks to getting it you know, across to Wayne's land is you know, the wetlands. Right. And so I personally would love to see some sort of bridge or something, you know, some helping to facilitate some sort of connection would be mm -hmm. a positive thing for me. Um, I know that's expensive, so I'm not sure that you could fund it, but, you know, just helping maybe in that process. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate that question, and, you know, I mean, I think those are the sort of things we would be receptive to understanding. And, uh, you know, I, I can think of a few things. I, I would think that a multi-use path would have to skirt sort of a fenced area for liability reasons yeah. as far as uh, the stuff, you know, the, the, the garage operation. But to the comment made a moment ago about would we build or would we do anything else to the other areas that are obvious wetlands if there was a way to skirt what we need and outside of sort of a control area but on the property and have it be harmonious with the natural environment or a yeah. wetland, I mean, you know, we'd be happy to talk about that. I mean, I'd have to be conscious of yeah. the cost of something because it's not really a cost that we could probably bake into the project. But if we were to be the landowner, if the question is, would we be uh, amenable to helping to facilitate something else that you want? I think I'm here to I think I'm trained. I'm saying that. No, I understand. We, we don't want to bulldoze our way in, no pun intended here, and not be wanted or not be welcomed. But we, we do have some timelines that we have to move on. And that's why, you know, 
re really grateful to start this conversation tonight. And I'm grateful that you're both here, Secretary Flynn and Mr. Law. I think it's really important to have this open conversation and to understand um, the background, et cetera. I don't think that we can make a decision tonight, per se, mm -hmm. but um, to be able to have this open conversation is huge. Mm -hmm. And you. you explained everything really well, both of you. Thank you. And if I, I might add two, oh, that. I'm sorry. No, that's quite all right. If uh, I might yeah. add two, just really quick about uh, you know stewardship. I mean, what we're looking to do is not only do we need to get off Route 302 because, frankly, uh, we've been flooded numerous times, and we've been flooded since July, in in December. But we're working with ANR and others, and we're quite frankly. We're looking to turn that over to the river. Uh, the concept, I think, would be to take out all the impervious surface. Um, you know, I don't know what it's going to look like, but imagine something that has like levels of benches. So as water rises, the water expands and doesn't just get channeled and speeds up as it heads, you know, upstream or toward Montpelier, and just create an area for the river to breathe a bit before it overreacts and. That's what we're looking to do, uh, is to, we are going to get off that site and go someplace, but the plan is to turn that over, frankly, to the environment, and um, not that that necessarily takes care of any concerns you have about paying turnpike, but I say that because I believe <coughs> we are responsible, and I believe we want to do things in the right way, but we're in the garage business, just like a lot of the other industry that you have right in this area, and, and so, um, we're hopeful that, you know, in a respectfully, appreciatively, reasonable amount of time, you can let us know if we can work together, um, or you just, it, it would really be helpful to know either way. If you, yeah. if you just don't want us there under any circumstances, that at least gives us some guidance. But again, I, I, I've been on a select board and I respect your service, so uh, I realize it takes time to come to decisions on things like this but I mean for me I think it's you know I recognize there are car dealers there and that's not ideal but I think my and you know in our thought process is you know once the highest and best use is, changes those those will change but this mm -hmm. is going to be something that's going to be there for a long time mm -hmm. so I, I mean that's where why I have I struggle to wrap my head around it a little bit sure. but I mean I'm not you know I, I'm, I'm always open to conversation I just I struggle with it just yes. because of all the hard work I put in. <laughs> yes, I honestly believe there's other impacts to paying Turnpike North on the amount of traffic that goes in and out of Central Garage, and this is large trucks and commercial trucks going down Payne Turnpike North, and that's most has been a residential area for some time. That that's going to add a lot of truck traffic and a lot of truck noise for the residents that live there. Not only that, but the volume of traffic in and out of Central Garage is going to definitely cause an impact at the intersection with Route 62 and Payne Turnpike North. As the trucks in and out of to be serviced by Central Garage when you get in and off the interstate. And yeah, there's definitely going to be wear and tear on Payne Turnpike North. And so likely with this, a traffic study should likely be required. Uh, possible redesign of uh, the intersection of Route 62 and Payne Turnpike North for the traffic signal system, as well as a road rebuild, which would be required by some other large entity going, being added to a state roof. Um, I think there's more to this than just what's on this set of plans. I also wonder about the timeline between Turnpike being rebuilt. I mean, it's two years out. Yeah. Is that two years affect years. your decision? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
people that are tearing up the roads on mm -hmm. Thursday and Friday nights and stuff like that to get home because they're trying to beat everything and they're going around and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it took me six minutes this afternoon to drive from my farm to that door. Six minutes. But it took me six minutes to go from Fisher Road all the way to Grand Store in Montpelier. And it, I, I, it was at the speed limit following normal traffic. And it's gotten yeah, dangerous and it's really <laughs> starting to get out of hand. And to say that we're going to be two more years to shut that down, more people are going to get hurt on that 62. Mm -hmm. That is not fun anymore and stuff like that. It's dangerous. When you go through the mall section and stuff like that, there's terrible lighting in front of Walmart. Somebody's going to get hit. You cannot see the people coming out of Walmart. And it, it just, just everything's being directed and around and everything because that's a little rural corner. Well, the rural corner is paying for it because the big trucks are coming through. I, all winter long, GPS was sending 18 wheelers up. And they get to our driveway where it turns to dirt and they're backing down all winter long. That's, this is, this is, this is out of hand. This is not good. It's dangerous, and 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 it's not just little Berlin that's worried about it and everything like that. But the whole central Vermont area is going. What's going on with Payne Turnpike? Because it has a major effect on 62. When are they going to supposed to fix it? Two years. It is two years. Right. Well, we, I don't think we have a complete yeah. timeline yet. But it is not this year. Yeah, no, it's not. It's already down for one. It's not another year and stuff like that. Maybe. Somebody's going. More people. Well, let's just say, more people are going to get killed. There's going to be more problems with the fire department trying to get through and stuff and everything like that and stuff. This is just, just I mean, it's not a simple road. It is a major thoroughfare. And sending everybody around onto 62 or up over Hill Street or around and stuff like that and everything is not, is, is, is just not going to keep going. I mean, this, this, is, this is wrong. This is totally wrong and stuff like that. Because I don't know how many people understand it right now and stuff like that. When the flood took out that bridge, did anybody realize there was a 12-foot 100 foot long beaver dam that went through that culvert. That's where it went. Just down the road and stuff like that. Those beavers are now building at Fisher Road. Probably that'll be attended to because that's going to take Fisher Road again. If you look, there is a huge beaver dam. They just, hey, my wood's over here. We'll just rebuild. Yeah. But but Payne Turnpike, it, 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 it's, it's, it's not a casual inconvenience anymore. Trust me, I, I recognize that. I live there too. The problem yeah. is it's a, is a temporary fix. It's so expensive that it, 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 you just can't afford it. I, I get that. For two years? I mean, how many people, how many, how many you know, homes are going to burn, how many people are going to get killed, stuff like that, and everything <clears throat> for two years? <clears throat> And not just that, but so the added traffic that is going down Stewart Road. So my wife grew up here. She's been here for a long time. I moved here from North Carolina. We've been here about four and a half, five years now. And in four and a half, five years, uh, this past year has been the worst on Stewart Road. The three years before that, when you see them come and the uh, divots in the ground on Stewart Road, they have to come and plow maybe once or twice during the winter. This year, it was horrible. When the fire happened, I mean, I wasn't surprised that the fire truck went off to the side and somebody had to pull the fire truck out. It's because now that this road is shut down, they are using Stewart Road as a major road, and it's not. It's not paved. And all that they're doing when they go and they keep on plowing is they're just pushing the road out further and further over to the sides, and it's causing a muddy mess to where now you have other people that don't realize what's down there, either running off the roads. Mm -hmm. We have children down there. We have a blind person down there, and there's plenty of signs, but they don't care. So by this road not being open, all this traffic is going down a road that was never meant for it, and it's not paved. So you're going to end up having more cars, more wrecks, more people getting stuck, and there's no solution to this road. That bridge closure has also had a significant impact on the response times for the ambulance coming out of our station as well as the fire, fire as well as the fire department because we have to go through four traffic lights to go around the mall or else we have to go up and around another direction, take the interstate, and it's a we're definite. Yeah, we're getting a little, little bit off the, 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 the subject here. Um, I think we're right on subject. Well, There's a problem in our town. Brad, can I ask a question? Sure. I want to ask uh, sec Mr. Secretary, um, so <coughs> let's just say everybody loves the idea and you guys buy that piece of land. Do you? When, do you have the money? Yeah, we do. To build stuff, not just well, to buy the land. We would we would start that process in our fiscal 26 budget. 26. We have the money now to build. Did I mean, get, we have the money to buy, and you know we we have to finalize 
exactly what would be the first phase of building. What I said to you is that's a concept, yeah. a conceptual drawing. Um, we don't have 25 or 30 million dollars sitting there waiting to build, but this is fiscal 24. Hopefully the legislature gets us into fiscal 25 here as soon as they adjourn and July 1 comes. Uh, and then we start building our fiscal 26 budget in about August every year. So, right. So we would move to start to build this as soon as possible. Did you get federal money? Not really. We we don't th no. This would be state transportation dollars. Uh, there's there's really no nexus. Federal Highway wouldn't invest in a in a garage. I mean, because of the flood. Money. Money. Well, FEMA. Yes, we are going to get some FEMA money, and we're going to get we believe some insurance money from the state. But that's that's not going to be enough. You know, to build what you see on that paper. But the, the way our budgets work, if we have carry forward, if winter is a little different, and sometimes that can go in our favor, and sometimes that can go against our favor. Um, you know, that, that's typically how we operate. So, um, but we will, there, there will be a, a FEMA payout. But one of the things, uh, and again, I, this is part of my testimony in Senate Transportation, uh, FEMA has said they're not walking away from us on Route 302, but until we have more of a concrete plan of what we're doing, it's called 406, I think, mitigation, very much like the state hospital was, and I was at emergency management when that discussion went down in Waterbury. Um, Paying to replace the state hospital didn't come forward until the state had an idea of what it was going to do because they weren't going to invest in the same flood plan. Question. Yes, sir. So everything on 302, are you, are you going to be raising all those buildings or are we leaving something in place? Well, our intention would be, but we're not sure about the brick building because there may be some historic entanglements in that. So if that's the case, we'd have to figure out how that would play into the concept of what I discussed. But yes, the answer is um, the buildings come down and the impervious surface gets taken up and that is turned into a natural area. How that's exactly defined is a bit out there, but that, that's, that would be the case. Would the state consider allowing a developer or selling to a developer to build housing on the front part of the property? Down there or up here? Up here. I think I think we it's it, that would be a premature. Uh, I just asked because it me. doesn't seem like office space is really needed anymore. Well, <laughs> a lot of a lot of vacant stuff in my building. I know that. But you know, if you if you take a look at who is displaced, our uh, our Better Roads program, which helps all the municipalities, our training center. If you look at the total headcount, there were close to forty people, not counting our mechanics, uh, that were displaced down there. They've been sent to Berry City. Some have been sent to Dill. Or, or the property on that uh, across from the Nap Airport. So, uh, you know, consolidating some of those. Uh, so your your people come into work. Yeah. Yes. Oh, most well, of first our... of all, all of our central garage, all of well, our... obviously that. But I'm just wondering about the other. Well, I mean, not every single employee. There, every employee in state government has the right to talk with their supervisor and decide yeah. what works in the way of a remote schedule, like a lot of businesses say. But um, so, in the case of our agency. There are some people that have work plans that might be three days in, two days out, or vice versa. But but still, if you take that into account, I mean, I was at Dill today, and I have a little office there that's a third of this, or smaller than this third of this room. And the 75C conference room right outside my door was filled with two different training evolutions. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, I, I it would I could not. No. I think we if we were to buy this property, we, we we want to buy all of the property. And there's no, I mean, isn't isn't Chip selling property on the airport road? There's no property to consolidate uh, operations over on the airport road. We've looked at eleven different things, including our own property, actually on Airport Road. We looked at two um, sections. If you if you just pass the turn up to Blue Cross Blue Shield. There's not a lot between Airport Road and the fence of the airport. And if you go a little further past our current location at the Knapp State Airport, the right of way widens between uh, Airport Road and uh, the airport fence. Um, you know, we, Todd and I actually drove up in there and we, we looked at this and we talked about it. It's, it's, it would be a different site type of facility. And we still would have to work through FAA then. FAA made us move our District 6 operation that's on Industrial Avenue because it didn't have a direct airport nexus. So um, all that we can keep there now is our snow removal equipment and our mowing machines, and, and we lease it to somebody yeah. else So uh, that does have an aviation nexus. So 
there's I, I believe that that could be overcome that conversation with FAA because if we were to build a garage, maybe we could build a bay to put snow removal equipment, but it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be ideal. Yeah, I was referring more to on the other side of the road. I think Lagu is selling property over there. Isn't he selling his property? There is some property on this side of the road. We looked at that. I think it's Warner Road, right? And uh, uh, oh right yeah, what's that? What's that? Right before the Co-op Trail. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's not yeah. selling so anything over down. on the other side. No, it's down. Oh, okay. What yeah. area? It is. It's down. You go down past the church. There's a couple yeah. of residential houses. There's a sewer easement that goes through the parcel. There's like a water easement from the airport. Oh, yeah. have to go down through there, and then it drops yeah. down on the very Montpelier Road. Okay. I, mean, I was think. I was thinking you was selling land on the on your other the other side of your property over there, but yeah. we've looked. I mean, we've looked. Um, we want to stay in central Vermont. We want to keep our jobs yeah. in central Vermont. I mean, you know, large commercial space is more readily available in Chittenden County, but we really want to do that. We want to stay here. I mean, we call it Central Garage first for a reason. Um, it has proximity for our vehicles from around the state, but we want to keep our jobs here. No, understood. Thank you for answering my question. Sorry to keep this going. Anything I guess, else? I guess my recommendation is, you know, to, to keep looking. Um, but if nothing else works out, I think we'd be willing to work with you. Okay. But it's not our first choice. <laughs> Any any questions? May I just ask process, sir? I'm sorry. Like, will you? What it, it was? Were you? I know I've heard a couple of you say any time to think it over. Will you be letting us know? Should we sure. check with you? Yeah, yeah we'll definitely. You know. All right, sir. Hundred yeah. percent. All right. We appreciate yeah. it very much. Thank you for your time. We appreciate sure, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. thank you for coming. Thank, thank, thank you, Andrea, for Just bringing the our Have a good evening. Thank, thank you both. Long. Well, chief, that backfired on me. <laughs> Dan around? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't realize that we were going to get into such a, a, a debate on, uh, on on just those two bills. <laughs> I was kind of waiting for the 23 acres. Oh, yeah, we already did that. Yeah, that was. I, I I skipped some of it so I could get because uh, it was supposed to be uh, yeah. at six fifteen for Dan. Uh, That's okay because Vince just joined in, so perfect timing. Uh, Bye, Marta. Bye, Dan. See you. Everybody, Chief. <laughs> now I get the honor, right? Of yes, you do. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, are they going to do it there or are they going to move somewhere? Oh, I, I'm just right there. Probably. Did you want to do it in front of the flag? I think in front of the flag. Right there, right in those chairs. <laughs> Thank you so much, Phil. <laughs> you too. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I live on Stewart Road too, have for 60 years. Traffic is out of control. <laughs> but I have the honor today of um, presenting a resolution of accommodation for Dan Withrow. And I think we're very, very fortunate in Berlin for the police department that we have. And I have the utmost respect for Dan. I see he's like a cheat on red meat for solving crime. So I'm gonna read it to you, Dan. Whereas Detective Corporal Daniel Withrow has served the town of Berlin as a member of the Berlin Police Department since January, 2017. And whereas in July, 2023, a violent home invasion occurred in Berlin, which resulted in physical injuries to the occupants and over 100,000 worth of stolen property. And whereas Detective Corporal Withrow tirelessly, tirelessly developed leads using a variety of resources and techniques to investigate the case, and whereas Detective Corporal Withrow, through these leads, was able to initiate criminal charges against multiple individuals in this case. And whereas through Detective Corporal Withrow's actions, a large part portion of stolen property was recovered and returned to the owners. Now, um, therefore, be it hereby resolved that the Town of Berlin Select Board formally recognizes and commends Detective Corporal Withrow for his efforts to ensure the safety of the residents of Berlin. Be it further resolved that Detective Corporal Withrow be presented with a copy of this resolution as a token of the community's appreciation for his service. 
And we really do from the bottom of my heart. We are Good job. Thank you so much. Good job, Alba. Thank you, Alba. <laughs> <laughs> You're free to go. <laughs> got another copy. Oh, awesome. Thank Thank you. You. I got a copy of cheese for your personal thumbs. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Yes, thank you for everything you did. Thank you also, Chief. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, Tour. The uh, 23 acres on Payne Turnpike. So oh, that's already been covered, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, annual emergency management plan adaptation. I think I saw Mr. Richardson yeah, here. Oh, too late to say I can't make it. And he could do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yes, just the uh, that time of year again, the annual uh, state requirement to update our local emergency management plan. It's been gone through. I tried to incorporate all the recommendations that the uh, state suggested after the last one was submitted. And uh, plus it's updating contacts and some added some new places to our vulnerable populations list, the uh, independent school down on uh, past the airport there and so on. So uh, it's there for your approval. And for Carlos benefit, this is something we have to do every yeah, day. Yeah. So there's uh, not really any changes to the format no. of the plan itself. Just basically you know, updates of names, addresses, and phone numbers of the guarantee. I make the motion to approve the annual emergency management plan as presented to us this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Your second. Uh, any Thank further so discussion on this? No. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And Thank you very much to the slice board for supporting the emergency management team, Mr. Nelson, and his ongoing Continuing support since way, way, way back. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the uh, Chief Staub and Chief Pompeon and the uh, support that they gave as well. So it makes it a lot easier to do what they to do. So thank you. There, there, was, there was one thing in there. Can I? Sure. Okay. So the, the NIMS that they were, they were talking about, is there, is there training or something that we should be doing? And maybe the select board be involved with, would that be appropriate? Well, I'd say probably the 402. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd say the, they have an introductory course. Uh, FEMA runs it. Um, they have, I believe you can get it either independent study online or uh, through the state offers the training, um, usually right after town meeting day because of new select board members and so mm -hmm. on. So, yeah, the uh, ICS 402. Training would be probably the a good one. What is that? Can I ask what that is? It's an <laughs> introduction to ICS, uh, Incident Command System. Okay. So, which is all the NIM stuff is all. So, wasn't that was that suggested in the past mm -hmm. that the select board be part of that as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Try to so whoever signs the plan has to have taken at least that, that or one of the other ICS classes. Mm -hmm. I think you've taken some. I have taken some. some. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. you've probably got them all. I think so. you have more than, than I have, actually. But, but I, I think I think the, the, the board, regardless of who signs, I think it would be just really good I'm information. I'm willing to take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you I'll know, refresh, and the, too. Mm -hmm. And if I just go back to the, the flood in July, I mean, we're, we're running pretty much bare bones. I think you you were you were down for the count, still working remotely, and tour was 
Was that not the flood? Uh, briefly, Tour was all by himself. Yeah. I went down and was able to provide some support. Mm -hmm. So. But I think that, you know we we are like next in line yeah. to give support. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, Bruce. Okay, the volunteer fire department coin drop acknowledgement. That was the uh, so illegal coin drop. I don't I won't say illegal. Illegal is just a sick it's just a sick bird. It was yeah. <laughs> unpermitted. It is unsanctioned um, coin drop that was performed. Um, you know, maybe good intent, bad judgment, whatever that was. Um, the money that was raised during that was given to this, given to the fire department, was then turned to, um, brought to the meeting, given back to the fire department to hold. We had a board of directors meeting, and there was a lot of discussion around that. It was then determined that it would needed to go to the. Berlin PD and have it not returned. And so that's that's why it's not here tonight. Mm. Went to PD not to return. And um, can I ask why? Why? It was raised for the fire department? Is that the police I, department? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was just a, a, opportune moment someone may have thought it was just going to be a you know like i said good intention but bad judgment um, so when it was turned over to the pd there was discussion what do we do and i said find find a i don't know a needy cause and that was found fairly quick Yes, so to kind of answer that a little bit, um, I'm Mary Ellen. I'm a firefighter and a nurse, and I live so in Berlin. Hmm? <laughs> you were there when Michael was built. Yes, I was. <laughs> um, so as far as like the fire department getting that money back, the money wasn't sanctioned nor condoned. The behavior wasn't condoned. We weren't asked. So scenes that we don't agree or support the decisions that were made by the individuals involved. I feel had we accepted that money, that would say that we're condoning negative behavior. And I feel like eventually that would look very bad for us. So I too was at that board of directors meeting <coughs> and I too made a ruckus saying that, you know, this behavior is not okay. We do not condone it. And if we take the money back, it, it looks like we're okay with somebody using our equipment, making a cardboard sign or a plywood sign representing us who, you know, these individuals are not firefighters. They are not in our fire department. They did not work with us. I, I just feel like eventually as that comes around, it would really be negative on our department and put us in a negative, dishonest light. I appreciate that explanation. But did you say they were using your equipment? If they aren't firefighters, how did they... Yes. That's that's they, the right. <laughs> Flo, you drove through. Could that was have, one of the questions could, that I had actually. <laughs> what you, you just asked. Uh, I came through about ten of six that evening, and it was uh, that time mainly because of the um, well, event, was, uh, the, the eclipse. eclipse. Exactly, and so there was bumper to bumper traffic, but as I approached, the trucks were out. And you said trucks. Yes. More than one. Two trucks. Two trucks were out. Two trucks were out. Mm -hmm. And there were two gentlemen that were um, Are we talking like fire trucks? or like The fire <laughs> trucks were out of the bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. An engine. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I never saw the sign, but I thought it was legitimate because the trucks were out at the same time. And um, I... When you say out, you mean out of the station or out? Out as in, out in front of the station. Okay. But okay. still in the parking lot. Correct. Okay. Right in front okay. of the bed. I was thinking they were like in the room, like at the No, okay. no. Just uh, there was activity at the station, 
the trucks were out. It just all looked legitimate. And I think at one point Joe asked me if I had seen the sign because someone, yeah. I think Mary Ellen just described that it was kind of like spray painted. Yeah. I never saw that, yeah. but it was very busy time with back-to-back -back traffic, yeah. et cetera. And I just rolled my window down to say I didn't have any money with me and that I couldn't donate. And the first gentleman kind of chuckled and the second one was hugging a fireman's boot and had his cell phone and head down and didn't really look up. Mm. So at that point it didn't seem legit to me, but I didn't question it further, mainly because with the trucks out, just their behavior looked, said yeah. to me something wasn't right. And then I had received an email from Tour inquiring if we were aware of it. And I hadn't been. Um, and I don't think Joe was either, based on everything that has been described. So, to answer the question honestly a little bit, <clears throat> the chief and the tenant of the Riverton Station have an unwritten agreement or unsigned agreement, a barter deal, where the tenant was supposed to do some work in kind services for the department in trade for one of those trucks. And one of those trucks, the agreement was that if he needed to move it out of the building for working on the building or something of that nature, he could move it in and out. However, this agreement has gone two years now without being any work done on the building to accommodate the, the barter agreement. And honestly, there is no reason for that truck to be pulled out because the tenant has not done any of that work on the building or, or had any of the, the equipment or, or materials to do that work. So there was no reason or need necessarily to take the truck out, but at the same time we will admit that a truck run once in a while is a better maintained truck than having one just sit there. And however, the other truck, he had no right moving it. It's still, either way, neither of the trucks is the tenant's property. It should not have happened. What went on was wrong. I, I don't think, I don't feel he, he should be on. He runs half of it. That's his half. The other half is ours. The corporations, the fire departments. I, I didn't realize there was two. <laughs> There's a tenant in there because I'm not familiar with the fire station. So I was just thought was going to be my next question. Why aren't you the tenant? <laughs> but anyway. Anything else on this? There's none. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. Town Hall asbestos assessment results. Um, so we did have some testing done uh, at the town hall. Uh, the floor tiles in the town clerk's office came back positive. Uh, so I don't have the final report that was just a quick email I'd gotten from the tester. So don't really have much more than that to report right now, but we'll be getting more on what the recommendations are for uh, abatement or anything like that. It's something that's be dealt with immediately or or further with you know plan renovations to the building and stuff. Any um, anything about the walls? No. Walls spent came back clear. No, they did. So just the tile. Just the tiles, yeah. Okay. But if the tiles aren't disturbed, is there an issue? Or we don't know. They yet? are broken oh. and flaking mm -hmm. in places. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh let's see here. Dodge Farm Road Highway is acceptance. Uh, so early April, we did the site visit and public hearing on the Dodge Farm Road. Uh, there was one lingering issue from that as far as the uh, easement for access to the uh, drainage um, swale uh, infrastructure. Uh, that easement is in place and uh, is current, uh, so we do have sufficient uh, access to that. So I recommend adoption of the good fund. Is there a culvert issue you get as well? Remember there were yeah. supposedly like, told to plug it and nobody had an answer on why it was to be plugged? 
Uh, oh, we've heard about that. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to double check on that. But so the best thing to do there is remove it if it needs to be not usable. How about that? I mean, we plug it. That's just a, a problem down the road. Right. Technically, it needs well. It needs to be there, whether it can be in the spot that like there's got to be a reason why they were told to plug it but I mean to divert all that water to that one culvert by Rachel's is a little too much you got two driveway culverts that are technically not up to standard anymore because I believe they're 15s not 18s and then all the water from that one side of the road goes to the one culvert at Rachel's and that's why it washed out last year was is that one call where it didn't take it all and it jumped out of the, because it's all wedged down there, it jumped out and stayed up, off the ledge and went down the road. <clears throat> one one call where in that whole road is a little, a little shy. I, a lot of volume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is this something that we sh need to look at before we approve this or, I mean, because need, there should be, there should be a reason known to everybody why they were told to plug it. Well, I guess the reason I'm asking is, is would we expect them to, to move the culvert if, or would we do it anyway? Because if we would do it anyway... Well, technically, they would be the one responsible for it because they were responsible for any work road, done yeah. prior to acceptance. Yeah, getting it up to where we could take and accept it. I, would we need to so, add that under number one? I'm in favor of waiting. I think we need to wait to hear the answer. I would like to hear the answer. Mm -hmm. So we are. They, the they plugged it. Because the state Cause they were, to. Because they right? they were told to. Yeah. This is how how it goes, right? And they unplugged it themselves, or did it just happen naturally? Well, I guess Ray went down and unplugged it himself. Okay. But I don't know, you know I mean, that had to have gone through some sort of engineering and some sort of permit process when that road was put in there originally before any houses were in there. You know what I mean? So they didn't just slap that culvert in there at some point. Right. That culvert's been in there since that road was put in there. So we were going to look for the original so plan. So there should be a, you know what I mean? I'm just leery on the reason and why it was originally put in there, then turned around and plugged and then turned around and reopened because there's no, I mean, I'm no geologist, but there's no difference between the, the culvert that, that was plugged and the culvert in front of Rachel's house. <laughs> mm -hmm. but when it goes to the same place, which eventually goes downhill to their retention pond. I, that was the whole design, I believe, is why the retention pond is in the lower corner. Is because everything sheds into that one valley that goes to the retention pond. So I don't understand why. Well, if was there any benefit to plugging the culvert as far as uh, developing the lots? No, because they own both sides of the road. Those lots, again, a little funky. Those lots, the, the road divides the lots in half. Each, so the house is on the right hand side of the road. That house owns almost the exact amount of acreage on the opposite side of the road. But would that water flowing through there make the other half of that lot undevelopable? Or at least restrict it? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I would say we find out from the, the same, you know what I mean? It's, just, it, it's the same as Rachel's lot. It's just yeah. Rachel's lot has the culvert that's functioning, and then the lot above hers has another culvert, and then that one was plugged. You certainly bring up a valid point, Tim. I'm, I'm just curious, like, with us. most of the time you don't get approval to put a culvert in, and then yeah, have a 10 years down the road get told to plug it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you walk Did you walk the ditch on the out, outlet side to see where it daylights? It just goes uphill. It just naturally bleeds out into the, on the low end. On the low, low end. end of that culvert, yeah, it yeah. just naturally bleeds out into, the, out into the field the same as Rachel's does. Mm -hmm. Rachel's just kind of, they mow their half. I mean, they have a basketball court and the kids play down there, so her half is mowed. The next lot up is just um, left way wild. And, I mean, they just naturally bleed off into the 
So they're using that lower section to take in and filter the water. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I would entertain a motion to table this till we get the information. Okay, we, we are on a time limit here. We do have to get this approved within the next 30 days, just saying. Otherwise, we have to start the whole process again. Um, so, what would it we can find those original plans probably here at the town office in the vault. I'm not going to look for them. I'm sure they are. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so maybe, um, okay, well, so by the end maybe of this, Tom can do that. Can I, can I ask Tom to do that? <laughs> well, is that something we shouldn't do and it's up to them? Is that what you're saying? That's them being the, the current property owners of the road. Look at me or Tom? I'm looking at you. When you said I'm you're the, not going to do it. I'm not going to go searching for plants. My recommendation is to approve the findings tonight. Okay. There's nothing that's going to change the findings, right? Or, or, what, or am I missing something? I think the change would be that if the culvert, if they told them to plug it because it needs to be moved, that, that that would have to be done before we took it over. That's what, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I mean, that was my, why I said that. You know, it shouldn't be coming back onto the town to move it to get the road uh, uh, approved. That should be done on the Well, is the culvert open now? Mm hmm And does it meet town standards? Yeah. That's all we need. Then I don't know what else Except is there. Except that the state, I mean, the state said to close to plug it. Was it the state? somebody? Somebody, somebody, somebody said. Somebody said. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm leery about is who told them. Okay. Oh. When they said that, I believe it was the state. And then they could have been mistaken when they told us that. I don't know. But I just find it odd that it was. In, it went through the permit process and the engineering and the design to be later down the road plugged. You know, I mean, it very well could have been plugged by somebody that was trying to sell a lot. To dry a lot out to make it more appealing, appealing for a sale. I don't know. I'll see if I can get a hold of. Can, can we add a condition that says that the culvert uh, subject to the, the culvert not having to be relocated or something like that? That's a 15 inch culvert, right? Is that what you're mm, saying? No, I believe the road ones are eight, the road ones are 18. 18. The driveways are 15. Okay, uh, and. They're not already, that deep. They're already out. Oh, the, out, the outlet is probably three feet down, four mm -hmm. feet down, something like that. Um, 18 inches from the upside, something like that. Mm -hmm. You hear me? They're, they're adequate in size. They're, they're fine in depth. They're a little wonky, like we discussed with the angle of them, but you know I mean, the water's going to go through all of them. It's just kind of curious why they were told to plug it. I'd be more curious as to who told me. Yeah, right. Well, I, I guess that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, there's no. Besides all of that, yeah, it means, you know what I mean? It's, if we had to remove it, that little, what is that? Half day? If we had to remove it? Yeah. If, if, if they said. Just fill it back in? Yeah. Well, or relocate it. No. I, I, well, he's saying it needs to be there. Yeah, it does. The amount of water comes off that hill, something needs to happen there. See, they're, they're using that culvert to divide the flow. They're mm -hmm. taking, keep the, uh, the, 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 the runoff from being too much for one culvert in an event. So. Well, what's the board's pleasure? I mean, what does it cost? Well, if you had to move, what would it cost you? Or is, there, is it feasible to move it? Is that even not, a, not an option? To be honest, if we moved it, if it got moved to a different person's lot, you technically would have to have an easement for a yeah, water. Okay. You can't just pull so up. You're not supposed I'm, to just pull up and dump a culvert into somebody's right. property and divert water onto a landowner without having some sort of easement. Right, or, right, you know, right. You, gotcha. The I reason didn't know, why I we didn't can know change what the, what's there is because it's an existing structure and we can right. maintain what we already have in our road system. But to add. I mean, you have to go through the whole permit process. I mean, then 
I didn't know water. how much land that land on, you know, how much that land on our, but I, I, I'm fine with yeah. doing it tonight. That's fine. Well, yeah. And it's... <laughs> Is that a motion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not really, but... <laughs> It doesn't sound like it's gonna. There's really a an issue that would impede this. So, okay, a second. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, ice rink, solar, letter of intent. Copies in your packet. Uh, you recall we had the bond vote back in last November uh, to develop a multi season um, facility out here on the ice rink. Uh, and part of that was to put, look into putting a solar. Um, system on top of the roof to that, um, you know, not just being winter hockey, but potentially basketball, tennis, pickleball, which I guess is very popular nowadays. Um, and then with the benefit of the solar on top, that would, uh, you know, recoup some of the cost of that. Um, so we've engaged with the Boy and King for development of the, I don't know, say the, the Playground surface, the you know the, the rink and the, and the ground part itself, and uh, went out for an RFP on the solar portion. Only got one response, uh, which is with Sun Sun Common, which is a uh, company out of uh, Waterbury, um, and their letter of intent uh, you know, to proceed is involved uh, included. In that, uh, so looking for, they're looking for, you know, ready for signature on that tonight. Uh, you know, it still has to go through a lot of steps. Let's go get uh, public utilities commission uh, certificate of public good and, and all that uh, and to everything else. Uh, Mr. Collier is uh, online with us uh, tonight. Uh, He's been a very uh, vocal in a lot of the solar projects in town, and I'd like to open the floor to him. Um, yes. Well, I was, you know, I dialed in today to see if, you know, I sent through Tom a number of questions and calculations on how I see that this, the, the solar portion of this ice rink is going to cost, is, is not worth purchasing just just for money uh, I'm assuming everyone there has seen my calculations and and comments not from the um, email you sent to Tom no I, I you know I saw your uh, letter in the um, world uh, I think it was a week ago two weeks ago. Um, yeah. But no, no direct email to, you know, we, of course, uh, e email chain between you and Tom. Okay. Well, what, what I had sent Tom, I, I don't know how you work the Zoom meetings. I can share my screen and show you what it is, or I can just tell you. I believe. I don't know if you have a big monitor here. We do, yes. Well, we have a monitor. Uh, it's not <laughs> hugest, but it's... Uh... I won't be able to see anything. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I can resend this, or I mean, I can just tell you the proposal was for 150 kilowatt solar canopy. And what was in the proposal was telling you how much it was going to cost Berlin after you got all the grant money and how much money you were going to make from electricity generated from the, from the canopy. Now, I... I did some of my own calculations on there, not 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 trusting the the math that the salesman gave. And you know when I when I factored in how um, what the actual uh, capacity factor is and efficiency of solar panels in Vermont, it's it's pretty it's it's not as sunny up there in Vermont as it is in New Mexico or something. I came up with some. Now, drastically different numbers, 
as to how much energy might you might actually be expecting to get from these solar panels. And then on top of that, I questioned, you know, solar panels, they uh, they decrease in their output over years by 0.8%. So if you run the math on that, it reduces what you're going to get even more. And then I questioned, too, you know, there are going to be lots of other costs associated with having these solar panels up there, not just what it's going to cost for this company to install them. Um, Typically, people with solar with uh, solar panels, you use an inver inverter to convert the DC into AC. And historically, those inverters start failing at about 10 years. So that's going to cost you, I don't know, three, four. I don't know exactly what the inverters are that this company is planning on having in there, $1,000 to replace. Um, what other costs are going to be associated that you've got uh, – the geotechnical report, the land survey, there's operating operations and maintenance, which the vendor would charge you $150, $105 an hour. But I mean, how many hours is that going to be? Are you going to pull, are you going to put insurance on this thing? Or you know, what if you damage that solar field, that solar canopy? What if uh, one of the kids decides to climb up there and fall off it? Um, there, there are a bunch of unknowns, and I, I don't see that you should just go ahead and say, yeah, we're going to do this and spend, what was it, seven, dollars $725,000 on putting solar on top of this canopy over the ice rink, where it, may, it might be a, a losing deal of almost a quarter million dollars. So I was at, in what I sent Tom and thought was going to be distributed. I was hoping that the planning commission and others would, you know, run my findings against the what the salesman had. Um, the, in the salesman's proposal, he gave they gave examples of other people who have put canopies in like this. Has anyone talked to them to see whether they're getting the performance that they were told and find out what it's actually costing them to have this canopy going there? You know, so I was, <laughs> wanting, I was wanting that. Hopefully someone there was going to do that so you could have good information to make your decision on how to go forward with it. So I just want to respond somewhat. Um, I don't... I, I haven't seen your numbers, and I, I I just want to go back to the idea that I think the idea is that we want the canopy, regardless of the solar. The solar was a way to provide additional funding and provide some returns. So the canopy itself, we want to expand the recreational access and the recreational uses, and that was integral to the canopy. So the, the, the money is... It, so. So forgetting about the solar piece, you know, that we would, you know, that was just sort of a, an idea to try to make it more financially viable, I think. That's that's how I look at this. Whether it is or not, I don't know. I like I said I haven't seen your numbers, but I think the canopy was we wanted the, the intent was we wanted the canopy anyway. And I don't see anybody here from the Recreation Commission, but that was my my understanding. I mean, I appreciate your comments, and I know you're always good about attending these. But I think it. I think that's where I come down on this. Okay. Well, the the Tom had forwarded me the proposal, and the cost for the solar on there was seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. There wasn't. I don't know if that included the actual the canopy or not. The the way the way it read, it was for the panels. I think that's for the canopy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My understanding, Brett, is that is the cost of building the canopy and, pro and probably putting the panels. I don't know. I, I don't have it in front of me, but the whole project is supposed to be a um, million dollars, right? That, that's before incentives. And that's with building the canopy and the, doing the work and whatnot. Right. So. Okay. Well, as you see, I've got their, their questions then. Because that's you no know, 
looking at looking at the proposal that's that that's what i saw yeah i think it's conflated the sun the solar and the canopy are conflated together okay well it, then it would be nice to know what the what the what the canopy costs are then what the solar costs are was that ever put out to bid the canopy alone is that still Not alone no the subwork was put up to bid and the solar was put up to bid interestingly on here it does say estimated total system price before incentive and canopy only so if the canopy was going to be somewhere around 750,000 right yeah that's because that was the bond mm -hmm. and so your your solar panel is about 28 just and just under 29,000 are we going to own the panels i thought the company was going to keep the panels I would think they would own them. Well, but not it's entirely a good true. Question. Um, I have solar panels. I own my solar solar panels. Yeah, I was just thinking. I think the option the is there. Yeah. Was for the, I, because I, I mean, we, we we went through this in the planning commission, but so long ago, my memory I can't can't provide the answers that I'm looking for. Um, and unfortunately, Tom's not here, but. Yeah, that that sounds like a lot of money just for the canopy portion of it. I I don't know, but I it sounds like you only got one company to bid. There's that's a lot of site work as well. Yeah, that's the site work that you know. That's that's the cost of the project. My understanding is right. Yeah, and it's going to take quite a bit to get that level and expand yeah. it out to where they want it. Yeah. I believe that's the cost of the entire project, but I wish um. I wish our recreation, I wish Thomas stayed. He would know the answers to these questions, I think. Mm -hmm. oh, well, this is, and this is only for design. It's not. Right, right. It's not. Um, I, I'm comfortable going ahead with the design, and then yeah. I think yeah. we should get some more information on the actual project. And we can um, see what they're, see what, you know, those numbers actually come out to be yeah. Yeah. before we actually pull the plug on it. Mm -hmm. Or put in the plug in the plug, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, to, to to beef up your ice skating rink and you know putting a cover over it to keep the rain off if people want to play basketball or something in the summer, I, I I have no problem with that. But it's just it's the thinking that we're gonna get anything uh, out of the solar component. I. I just want to caution you because there are a lot of other hidden charges that I'm finding out on. In, in, in yeah. I'm also feeling like there was some sort of grant that we that had that needed certain aspects in it that we applied for, and this may be why the solar came into play um, is for that grant funding. But I, I don't hold don't quote me on that. Don't hold me to that. A, a couple weeks prior, I saw in the Washington World, a uh, homeowner had a letter to the editor in there about the solar panel that she had on the top of her house that they put on and, and uh, damaged her house. She has to replace the roof and ha went through lots of problems. That she, and she says she hasn't even gotten her, her uh, subsidies yet. Yeah. On the road. So I, I don't know what her full story is, but. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your, your comments on it. But I'll make a motion to approve this contract. I'll second. Letter of intent. Letter of intent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, special event permit for Glenis Hill Farm. Uh, so, okay, this is in your packet. This is an annual. Um, event uh, to raise money for their uh, low-income CSA 
program on uh, Glynis Road. Uh, the police department's looked at it, has no concerns. The fire department's looked at it, uh, made two comments. First is need to maintain approximately 12 foot access for emergency response vehicles, and that a burn permit is required and be, needs to be in be separate from this application. Uh, they've here? had this event for a couple of years, and no issues have been come up in the past. Is there anybody here representing this application? Where is Glennis Road? Coxbrook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Coxbrook. Oh. Is that for a music down. festival? Huh? Is that for a music festival? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you go? <coughs> no, I just found out about it. <laughs> You'll be there, right? This year. <laughs> July 29th. 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Which stop? Motion on this? I move to approve the special e event uh, application with the fire department's noted conditions and to waive the fee. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, policy on private contractors parking on town pro property. Uh, so Mr. Bigman brought this up uh, at the last meeting and I uh, just wanted to get everybody's thoughts on this, if we wanted to move forward or not. Um, Mr. Bingham, did you want to start off with this or my name's tim bingham and i live right down the road here at the corner of shed road in the antique house the uh, historic house and when i bought my property eight years ago of course i knew i was moving next to the highway department next to the police department and i knew all that what i didn't count on was the private contractors who get let to use the property <clears throat> if you guys don't know Tim and his crew need, and we want them to have, thousands and thousands of tons of material every year. So those trucks come and go. There's a lot of traffic in and out of here. Not generally, it's usually before 4.30. Uh, particularly when is it August or September, October, when he has all this material coming in. So just as insult, I can't open my windows. I like to be outside washing my cars and doing outside stuff. And you know, of course, the truck's got to come and go. But my question is always, why are we inviting private corporations, for-profit companies, to park on our land when there's an industrial park right up the street? And one of the companies you might remember, Winterset, did construction for the state of Vermont on the two bridges, four bridges out here, and they came and they got somebody's approval. Well, they set up a uh, they set up a field office. They had electric and plumbing, and you know they had a whole field office out here. And I was told that when they were done with this project, they were going to leave. Well, they got done this project, they didn't leave. They then were working on a project down in Montpelier, but they left the field office. So my ask is, why do we have private corporations using our property ostensibly for free. Now, it was mentioned that, oh, we get a little service out of this company or a little out of that company. And, okay, I get that, but can't they also park up there and, you know, I could drive around, I could take any of these, the, the tree company or Winterset or anybody, be happy to drive them around and talk to the landowners up in the industrial park. I bet I could help them find a place to park. You know, I'll pay a little rent. I just ask that we not continually, not add to what we've already got going on here, which is a lot. So I'd like to open my windows in the summer. Thank you. So we don't charge them for the space? No. Do we have them? And do we benefit from them being here? In kind, we do. I mean, now. I mean, it's not worked out in advance, but um, we do. You know, they offer some yes. sort of assistance or service if we need them. You know what I mean? Winter if set, we need them. Winter set, well, you know what I mean? If I don't need a tree, tree service, you know what I mean? What, I mean 
Um, but like, Winterset gave us a very large excavator during the flood to use to set the bridge on Richardson Road free of cost. It would have cost a lot of money to have somebody move an excavator in that size. And when I called them and asked them, they said, you got a key for it? Yep, then it's yours. Wow. You figure out how to get it there, you can use it all you want. It's that kind of, I mean, there's still companies out there that do honor, you know, favors for favors and stuff like that. Not saying that we're just going to let everybody roll in here, but. Well, so we've been having tree service guys work? No, we, for us. we haven't. Oh, okay. Will this be an issue when we don't no longer own that other land? No, it'll probably no. have to be. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't have the space, right? <clears throat> I mean, well, it's just not been used anyway. But no, yeah. oh. where they're at now, it's. Oh. So most of I them. I didn't know if we had to move the garage, whatever we were going to do yeah. when we sell that land, if this was gonna, we were going to have enough land to let people sit on. We wouldn't move the army in here, but a guy with a couple of trucks. <laughs> there's more than enough room. Sure. Yeah. So all, I mean, when, when you were on, there was one white truck out there, I apologize. There was a white truck out there, the tree service, that had, what do you call it, the chipper that mm -hmm. he's towing. And, and it was out there all winter. I mean, they'd come and go, and I wasn't too worried about it. And then, I don't know, a month or so ago, now we got three rigs out there with three trailers and a broken down trailer next to them. I mean, it's just, <clears throat> I don't care that they're there if they could go out the other way. It's this little tiny skinny butt road down here. And my, when I sit in my office chair, I am 11 feet from the hubcap of the vehicles going by my house. So I'm just asking if possible, let's not increase the road demand out here more than we need it. And I appreciate Winterset took a, took helped us. Winterset also got $34,000 a year to stage their field office out here for three years. And we got that much. Now, Tim got some money out of them, ostensibly, not money, but service. Service, yeah, and that was great. Do we chloride this pe the paved road at all? Certain times of year, a lot of truck traffic. Yeah. You can't spray chloride on a road. You can't do that. That'll, that'll, that'll be like, <laughs> that, oh, okay. black, that blacktop would be like glass. Right. Okay. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Oh, it's slick like as slick you, can be. You put, oh, okay. you put liquid chloride on an asphalt road. Like, mm. I mean, we dribble a little bit when we turn around in places, but if you were to spray it, that'd be like that skating rink out there. <laughs> I've seen it, witnessed it. Wow. Well. It's oil. I mean, that liquid chloride turns just straight up oil on asphalt. I'm not safe. And no other means of dust control that we can think of. Sweeper. <laughs> yeah. That just makes more dust. Yeah. Well, your thoughts on perhaps pursuing a uh, policy on this? I haven't started drafting anything up yet. I mean, I want, mm -hmm. wanted to get your uh, thoughts on it first. You know, if they're doing work for the town of Berlin, I get it. If we're just a, a parking spot for them, you know, I think we, we, I feel like the town of Berlin gets used quite often. I think we should have a policy. And I think, uh, you know, as Mr. Bingham stated, you know, these costs are factored into their bid proposal. You know, that, that they're going to have to have areas to stage and park and everything like that. And, you know, anything they can do to lower their costs, they'll, they'll jump at it. So I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not saying we should put a flat out ban on it, but I think we do, you know, should have some controls and some expectations. Another one is, you know, not using the chip breaks and all. We've talked about that before and I heard, you know, I, I've been around trucks for 32 years, so so I don't mm -hmm. always notice it, but, you know, I noticed one this afternoon, you know, coming down, but, you know, so you being close to the road. The Jake breaks, Jake, the Jake breaks vibrate my house. Yeah. Literally. But when they're loaded, I get it. I, I'm a trucker. 
and there's times you need it and there's times you don't. But some guys just get so used to it they forget to flip it off. If they would consider flipping it off, I will buy them free coffee and donuts. <laughs> So I think I'll start drafting something up, and then we can you know, take a look at it from there. Well, I mean, you, I mean, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You, they can see what other towns are doing. Best practices. Exactly. Best practices. <laughs> okay. Thank Anything you. else on this? Thank you, Tim. No? Yeah. Thank you, Dor. Um, appoint, appointments to Vermont Central Regional Planning Commission. Uh, TAC and DRB. Uh, so we're getting into the annual appointment um, for the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. We're looking to reappoint uh, Robert Wernick as the town uh, representative on the Board of Commissioners and Carla DeLiso as the alternate. And then to appoint uh, Bob Wernick as our Transportation Advisory Committee representative, the TAC, TAC, and uh, we do not have an alternate at this time. So I'll make that a motion to make those three appointments. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Appointment. Then we have uh, two on the Development Review Board, uh, John Frederick and Carla Nuiso. Uh, their terms are up for the Development Review Board, so I recommend and make the motion to appoint both of them to new four-year terms on the Development Review Board. Second. And they both said yes. By the way. Wonderful. She may not remember that, but you guys <laughs> Any other comments? Those in favor? Uh, Aye. I guess I'll abstain. The motion carries with one, <laughs> with one abstention. I'm not supposed to vote for myself. And Is that it? Yep. Do you want more? Yeah. I, I, I will have more next meeting. Okay. Sure. Um, public. Uh, Department of Public Safety Risk Assessment. So, we talked earlier about the left hand not knowing what the right <laughs> hand is doing in state government. This is the exact same thing within the Department of Public Safety. So, if you remember last fall, we made some updates to our purchasing policy and conflict of interest policy because the State Department of Public Safety felt that the, our policies were not up to uh, code for uh, federal grant funding. Um, so last March, the fire department asked the town to prepare a risk assessment, which Vince did prepare, even though he vehemently denies it. And he's not going to speak up and defend himself on that, apparently. But um, that, that, that got him. Um, but made out. They have identified some weaknesses with our policies, and so they did a, well, it was over Zoom, but an on site risk assessment. Uh, where they identified a couple of weaknesses, um, so they, you know, they are looking for some updates to the personnel and purchasing policy, for the most part. So I will get those taken care of. But in the meantime, we've got another email from the State Department of Public Safety, wanting another risk assessment, and I'm like, we just did one last week. What is their reasoning for wanting us to do another? Because our, I guess Bruce has already left, but our local hazard mitigation plan is coming due for renewal, eligible for a grant. So one grant program within the Department of Public Safety doesn't know, know what another grant program with the Department of Public Safety. And I don't know what this was. The one that started it was supposed to be for the fire department, uh, a grant. Um, I don't know if you ever got the grant or not. Uh, Matt Romai, 
now. No. He's, he's still online. I don't know if you remember what that was for. But in the meantime, you know, we had to, you know, we wanted to get grant funding to upgrade the, uh, replace the uh, police body cameras. That's our that whole mess. And now we've got a third mess with the Department of Public Safety wanting a different grant. It's business typical for state government. Business yes. as usual. So there'll be more on this. Uh, we do have to provide a response to the um, uh, to this financial review, and you'll see some updated policies coming through. It's nothing major. We can just add a couple sentences and basically saying that if you know this project is a recipient of federal funds, you will follow federal regulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tour. Uh, Act 82 update. This is the, I'm taking your job away from you, Mr. Oh. Chair, but um, Act 82? Uh, Act 82 is the uh, reimbursement uh, for the towns for the educational portion of taxes that were abated due to the floods. Uh, we did send in our request, uh, it's a little over $16,000 that we've requested, so hopefully we'll hear back on that. Pretty quickly. Uh, this is basically just for your information. Uh, Addison Drive covert failure. We discussed this at the special meeting last week. I don't know that we have anything more to add to that. I put that initially, and then we had the special meeting, and I, I never took it off. So, uh, unless somebody has anything else, we do have a box. Mm -hmm. All right. We do. Okay. Um, Ours or borrowed? Mm -hmm. Borrowed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Northfield Water Department, so we can borrow one of theirs. Fantastic. Well, did you have any trouble uh, coordinating uh, the excavator and? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Great news. Good what? job, Tim. What was that you borrowed, man? Trench box. Trench box. Trench box. We're in the process of going through a grant for one for ourselves, but. Oh, so this is an expensive item. Won't. I'm not familiar with it. Probably yeah. another risk assessment we're going to have to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, so you can work at home with deeper four foot. Oh, I got you. Yeah, to protect the men, mm -hmm. yeah. women, yeah, workers. Thank the town of Northfield for it. Yeah. Tremendous, and thank you. Thanks, Northfield. Anything else on Aston Drive? Okay. Um, US 302 encampments issue. So about a year ago, we started looking at an encampment policy and didn't really get too far. Um, but I've included an email from uh, Sergeant Bassett to the state. There's a strip of land um, back behind, um, well, between like the Staples and the uh, you know, that old gas station, uh, Winter uh, World. And, and stuff like that, yeah. Um, that is state owned. That apparently probation and parole has been encouraging um, transient to move in there and camp. And uh, concerned about these are more aggressive uh, type of transients. Um, in, worried about increasing criminal behavior and calls for services in the area and stuff. Um, really just to bring it to your attention, I've included the map uh, in your packet of this uh, strip of land. It is, it is owned by the state, um, here again, B-Trans, and it's going to talk to probation and parole to see what the story is and what the real situation is. But I just really wanted to bring this to your attention. Uh, tonight, not any um, need for action. Comments. Yeah, I'm curious if, when they say allowing individuals, I'm curious if they're just, if they know they're living there and they don't, and they let them versus encouraging them. I'm wondering what the, do you know what I mean? Like they give that as, they tell them that's where they're living and the state doesn't tell them they can't, but I can't believe they're encouraging them to live there. But I would be curious to know <laughs> if they are. Well, that's the story, or maybe it's yeah. even what? Yeah, I know that's what Chad, I, wrote, I read this, mm -hmm. and I saw the pictures, and yeah, it's not good. I mean, I just, I guess I would like better increase in, that. Increasing the, you know, the thefts and stuff at the, at the shopping 
shopping center there, especially TJ Maxx. There's quite a few um, tents down there now. Yeah. Because you can see them now through the trees. There are. Mm. And a curiosity tour, do you know whose land they are on? State, state land. land. It is state, state land. land. It is state land, yeah. yeah. Have they ever gone and in there and cleaned it out? The Not state? Not to my knowledge. No, I don't believe so. River did last year. Huh. River, River did last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clear them out. Okay. And anything else on this tour? No. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, licenses, permits, vouchers, applications, warrants, payroll, uh, approval. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24-23 for payroll from April 7, 2024 to April 20, 2024 to be paid on April 24th of this year in the amount of $61,007.80. Payroll warrant 24-24 for payroll from April 21st to May 4th, 2024 to be paid on May 8th, 2024 in the amount of $60,030.00. And 91 cents, and payable warrant 24G24 with check number 23896 to 23935 in the amount of $140,329.38. I'll second. Any other comments on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 We just, uh, we just have one set, uh, the Thursday, May 2nd uh, special meeting. We don't have the 4.15 minutes yet. I make the motion to approve the special meeting held on May 2nd as presented to us this evening. A second. Um, any comments? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And Round table there. four? I wasn't there. Oh, same? One extension? Uh, round table four? The only thing that I would add under round table is the Payne Turnpike North update. And the reason for that is I know there's folks that are here. Um, and I was approached in terms of wanting additional information um, from some folks. And they have been here uh, throughout the meeting. So. I would entertain if that's acceptable with you, if there's more discussion that's desired. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Well, a round table really isn't for an open no, forum. No, it but, isn't. I just, but, I mean, out of kindness. It would be the third time tonight we've talked about it, but mm -hmm. yeah. since they're here, I'm here all ears. <laughs> yeah. I think respectfully, Renee Burke um, made a lot of good points about what's going on in the town right now. Um, Carla being living on the same road that we do, she feels the same thing that we're feeling right now. I really believe that the town should look into opening Payne Turnpike North, not only for convenience for us who live over there, but for the safety for the fire department to get to us, ambulances to get to us, police to get to us. I mean, we saw this year, I mean, our fire trucks had to go all the way around to get water to bring it all the way back. And Carla, not to bring it up, and I'm yeah. sorry because it's a terrible loss what you guys have gone through, and I'm sorry. Um, but I, I really believe that we really need to look into how we can, and I know you guys are doing your due diligence, but if there's anything that we can do to try to get this move forward um, for safety reasons, Bus routes, I mean, my son's bus was delayed multiple times this year. Wait, 10 to 15 minutes each day? And it was because they had to go around Well, we weren't notified at all by the transportation department that our kids' buses were gonna be delayed. Yeah. So we had multiple absences because we didn't have a way to get our children to school. It's a main road in this town. It's been a main road for, for a very long time since that road has been there. And I think for closing it for another two years is just going to add more burden to our road, more accidents to occur. And if anything were to happen, what that response time is. I mean, I know there are multiple 
people who are on the fire department who live either on Hill Street Extension or roads that they would have to go around to even get to the fire department and then to go from the fire department to go all the way around again to get to our side of town. And I really feel that the town really needs to push however we can to really get this road reopened and maybe looking at again just to do something temporary. You know, I know whatever it was, the 1.4 million or 8 million it was to do that temporary bridge seems excessive for us, but is it really for the convenience and safety for your town taxpayers? That's my thing. And if we've got federal funding for the culvert, is there a way to look into getting funding for a temporary bridge? I just think it's, it's hard for us to just say, no, this is what we're going to do, and we're without a main road in our town. And I'm sure for our highway department, it must be really hard to have to go all the way around to get to that side of town. I mean, I can't speak for you, Tim, but I just, I just, I, I, I'd like to agree with you, but it has not been that big of an inconvenience to us. Okay. Fire yeah. daily operations have had some fun. Yeah, I think it's it's just really tough to financially because you know when you look at the increases in the state education funding and the, I mean all in the tax I mean, the tax increases are going to be phenomenal as it is, and we just don't have. I mean to ask for a million dollars to put a temporary fix, and I just I just I personally. So I want to add. Feasible. I just want to add one thing to it. We have had another road that's been closed for much longer, to Lovers Lane and Jamin Road, and then people have threatened to go on the lawyers, withhold taxes. They want their road as bad as the people from Stewart Road. Um, and I and I appreciate them. And but they've all road. been told no and to wait. You and know I, what I mean? And I, and I get that. But I feel Paint Turnpike doesn't serve just Berlin. Paint Turnpike serves Montpelier. It serves multiple other but communities. Montpelier don't pay our taxes. No, and I agree with you. I they don't put you in. All them carries that come up out of Montpelier. But don't, the funding put, we're don't getting, put a dime into that road. And I agree with you 100%. You mean that was somewhere where he went with the, the state of Vermont using that road. Anyway. But the funding that we are getting isn't from us either. It's from federal. Granted, it's a long, but the, the, the long scheme is really our money because right. we're paying yeah, taxes. Yeah, it's a class two funds. highway. It's a federal related highway. We have to follow federal regulated laws. It's not just the state of Vermont. Like You guys have seen that laundry list of... I mean, Did you get a copy of that? I did, sir. And actually I mean, sent me a copy. The worst. Well, okay. So the worst. The worst well, part. Of, worst part about all of this is, is like when a project this size comes along, normally it's functional until the day it's not, yeah. hmm. and all these permit processes are still done up through there, but nobody gets to see that part. Unfortunately, we have to go through this part with a closure yeah. and abide by the laws, the rules. To get the money, so I mean, the we road's can not fix pa it. passable, is it? No, no. And it's gotten worse. Yeah. And um, it, it's not in consolation, but you know we we've seen this delay with the Route 12 page paving oh, this year. I mean, how long was that in well, that was planning? Two years. Um, the Route 12 Riverton Bridge. You know, we've been talking about that for years, and it's still two or three years. Um, I know it's frustrating, and it's probably, you know, not right. And I'm, you know, I would think, you know, somebody can come up with a way to stream it. Not me. I'm not smart enough to be able to figure that out. But uh, you know, if, if you saw the, you know, the the flow chart. I mean, and we have to have a local concerns meeting. I can tell you what the local concerns are. You're saying, you're saying what they are right now, that the road's still closed. Yeah. Why do we need to have a whole another meeting just for that? Right. We, you know, we can identify. And then there's an alternatives meeting or something like that. I mean, it's just. To be honest with you, watch who you vote for. <laughs> I mean, I the house saying, at the bottom of the hill is the one that set up all these stuff. Like one permit process is six to eight months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't I thank you for talking to legislators? In which I, I'll be honest with all of you, and I've been honest with flow with our communications. I have been in touch with them. Yeah. And I have been in touch with Governor Scott because he's a Berlin resident. Yeah. He has to see the impact that that road has for our town and the impact that it has for it being closed. So I am going to be honest with you, I'm trying to do some groundwork myself and I'm hoping I'm not stepping on anybody's toes by doing that, but 
And if I am, please let me know. A lot of state processes that we're provided by. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, I have from gotten another potential option. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up, but another avenue to explore, possibly to you know get some temporary work done. I've you know I just got it uh, today, so I've not looked into it yet, but. We're still trying to work in all angles as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Know. And I, I guess my thing is I'd be happy to just stay in communication about it because um, it it's a huge concern for the town, and I think it's a huge concern not not just for Stewart Road. I know it seems like just Stewart Road is here to <laughs> represent that, but it's a part of our town. <clears throat> it needs to be open. It it truly it truly does. You know, what really bothers me, it's hard for me, is we talk about the town center and we're putting this, this focus on, you know, the, the town center and worried about the garage coming in or what, lo what we might be losing for green space, but yet we, we have a major artery that is signed off and barricaded and everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and we're looking to build more infrastructure and we can't keep the this is This is how I feel, you know, and it, and it is. It's when we talk about the bridge on Route 12, or, or the reclaim the paving of Route 12. At no point, no one could not travel Route 12. And Tim hit it on the head. You know, there's a lot of things that could have been done if we knew it was all going to, you know, go south. Right. Um, My only it's thing a tough one. For concern that I have with paint turn pipe or staying closed for the next two years is the new town center when they redo the whole mall entrance. 62, I'm guessing, is going to have to go down to one lane for them to do that construction with safety. So now we're also bottlenecking a main, another main route in our town. Granted, I'm no. saying this without knowing everything. Yeah, we're, we're, we're wouldn't let them pull that down and do that where that would all be off site. Where, like, they would if the blacktop would be as far as they'd go out into that road. They're going to start. They'll probably the close that entrance to the end of the mall. Yeah, the entrance will, yeah. The entrance oh, they just stays in the, the same right, they, they, won't affect, the they won't affect any traffic on 62. Well, but, it's, but, it's, but it's being used as a bypass. Yeah, like, right, yeah, yeah. So that, that's what's happening right now. Like, is it, like the mall right now is going to have to redo the parking lot. I know that costs. I happen to work for Walmart, and they're doing their major remodeling right now. People are, and there's even more accidents that are happening there. People aren't going around. What they're doing is they're coming right from one side of Walmart, going all the way through, and that's what's happening. So it's busting up the mall parking lot right now. Like, I mean, I can tell you this, that Walmart was going to pay $500,000 just to redo their part of the parking lot. And then when it came down to the part of, well, it's under contract by the mall, Walmart couldn't repave their own Walmart during the new construction that they just have because of the contract. That's how bad the mall parking lot has gotten in the minimum amount of time that it's been shutting down that you have a major corporation that was just going to fix a mall parking lot because it was that bad for their own pedestrians. And like I said, I understand where y'all coming from and everything, but like you said too, it is frustrating to where we talk about all these other plans and how we want to put housing over here and take money. And I understand it's different pots of money and stuff like that. And we always try to grow, but at the same time, it seems like we're not fixing what we have or what we have is crumbling, but we're going to build new stuff to improve while not maintaining what we have. And I'm not the, you know, end all be all best person to articulate it. It's just, like you said, it is frustrating. It is. But, yeah. would, would there be any benefit, and you can just say no, would there, you have a lot to do. Tom has a lot to do. The clerk has a lot to do. You, we all have jobs and lives. Should we hire somebody, even if it costs whatever, 50 or 100 bucks, that their job is to help us get this stuff done? That's their only job. Yep. We just did. My, oh, did we? Not, but somebody right. my recommendation. Somebody well, can really, that's their job. True. I mean, yeah, we we just hired an engineer to f help us find an engineer. I mean, that's okay. that's the state process. But 
if I was going to pay somebody, I would say my next step would be to bring an in-house engineer into the town because uh, we're spending a lot of money on engineers and not just for paint turnpike. We've got you know two other culverts. We've got uh, Hospital Hill sewer so repair. We have the main pump station. We're spending a lot of money on engineers. You know um, that maybe that's something. Maybe some, you know, I'm not saying today we need to look at it, but I think I think in the future it's something to look to look mm -hmm. into definitely. And my, and I have to say it should be an economic development person because an economic development person can find money uh -huh. and bring growth to the town. Mm -hmm. That would be I, my recommendation. I had it in my budget, but you all took it out. I I didn't. <laughs> I tried to hang on to it. Okay, Joe. Thank you, though. No, yes, and thank, and thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for the round table for us to thank express you. that. Thank you. Much Carl, and, uh, you might have a cousin out there with a yahoo.com email address because I tried some of those documents to that. That was an old email address. Okay, well, it didn't, it didn't bounce back, so. <laughs> but thank you again for sending those documents as well. Carla? I had something in my head earlier, but it's gone, so I'll pass. Tor? I have included a letter in your packet because uh, apparently I'm harping on the state a lot tonight. Um, I had sent in a public records request to the tax department. Uh, I just want the names and addresses of all the businesses in the 05641 zip code that send local options tax to the state. Uh, I was denied and told that that is confidential information. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> so I have, I've sent it to our town attorney. I don't know that there's really anything to do. It's probably be more of a, needs to be changed in the, uh, by statute. Um, but I think it's kind of, all right, my filter's broke tonight. I think it kind of sucks that we cannot audit what the state is doing in regards to simple. I'm not asking for account numbers. I'm not asking for amounts. I just want to know that, you know, Simply Subs and Barry sends in local options tax. I want to know that Options Hardware and Barry sends in local options tax. I want to know if KFC or Big Lots or Staples or any of those businesses in Berlin still in the 05641 zip code are in fact sending in local options tax dollars to the state and that's going to bear. That's all I'm asking for here and I was denied. So I'm ranting, nothing's going to happen, but I, I think that goes against, and apparently I just did something to the Zoom meeting. Oh, no. Um, so. Did you say you talked to the attorney? I've sent the response. He's not looked at it yet. Okay. This, this is just last week that this came down. I honestly, I do public records requests at my job, and this seems unreasonable to me. I, I, the request or the, 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 response? the response? Okay. Any other thing around the table? <laughs> is that not enough? Um, do, do we need to go into executive session, Vince? That's entirely up to the board. Well, it's, uh, it's not it, worn, but it did come up. What would it be under? Personnel. Yeah, personnel. Yeah, let's go into an executive session. I moved to enter the executive session for personnel under 1 BSA 313 Second. And invites the town. The old town administrator, the new current town, whoever he is. I'll second that motion. Uh, you just call me old? Who you are. You are. You are. <laughs> All right, I am. A vote in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, folks. Have a good evening. Thank you.